It was the first time I'd been to a barbecue where every guest brought a rifle, but riflemen must keep their weapon within reach at all times. Relaxing, out of uniform, allowed two beers each, the barbecue was a treat to boost morale during this gruelling training exercise in the heat of Kenya. If making meals for your family seems a chore, imagine feeding around 900 soldiers three times a day for seven weeks. We were taking out probably two or three 20 tonne trucks per day to different locations because we're not just in one location. You know, we're currently looking after six different locations. Um, it's fresh food in some cases, so of course that's got to go out every single day. So um, it is a 24 hour job for the boys. You know, they don't stop resupplying to ensure that everyone's got what they need. The queue for breakfast, the food surprisingly good. Soldiers say they eat more here but still lose weight because of the heat and exertion. Away from camp, troops are nourished by ration packs. Captain Steve Harris, the man who's been driving me around Kenya, has been in the army for 24 years. This is the ration pack that we get um, issued for 24 hours. Um, this is what we have to survive on. This one's especially for you, Kerry. This one's vegetarian. You get three meals, um, you get a pudding, which for the, you've got today is chocolate pudding and chocolate sauce. Um, a breakfast, uh, which is a Mexican bean feast. Nice. A couple of types of biscuits, fruit biscuits and brown biscuits. I've heard some rumours about these brown biscuits. They do bind you up slightly, <laughs> but they haven't got better. Um, you get chocolate, and as you can see in this sort of heat, it's uh, really quite good. So you're not going to really get much out of that. No, you could probably suck it, yeah, wouldn't you? Probably drink that if you tried yeah. hard. These young men have lost friends in action. Living alongside soldiers, I realise how hard their job is and dangerous. I wonder why they do it. We do it for the greater good, innit? At the end of the day, we, we're not there just like for ourselves. We're there for the country to make sure it's safe. And when you're out there, you just rely on your muckers, you, you fight for each other. I'd be a liar if I said I wasn't scared. Uh, I guess fear is the thing that gets you through it though, because you're not just scared for yourself, you're scared for your family back home, and you're scared for the people beside you. And for the people that have been killed, you want to do your job, you know, to sort of, at least then you're, you're showing the family that you can still do it for them. You become a really tight family when you're on tour. That's what it's all about. The people in your like section, your platoon, they're all your family. Training is gruelling, but the motto of the commanding officer, train hard, fight easy. These sort of exercises are a tremendous boost uh, to the, uh, the spirit of the battalion because everybody comes together uh, and they get to really know each other uh, and you see the truth of people in conditions like this. Uh, and so the battalion will come back much stronger and a lot of uh, the junior riflemen will have proved to themselves that they are as good as the people who've gone before them and they can, they can survive in conditions like this. Four rifles start their new role as a rapid response force in October. They could be sent to tackle any crisis anywhere in the world. They'll do it with skill, courage, compassion and great humour. This is Kerry Swain in Kenya for Meridian Tonight.